All right, buddy, welcome to Digital Asset News. My name is Rob, and today, instead of talking about the news, I want to talk to you about um, a topic that I think deserves a little bit of a review before the narrative just gets obliterated. And what I want to talk to you about is inflation. I want to talk about uh, where, it, where it comes from, uh, where it could actually go to, how it comes to be, how it comes to pass, and just some detrimental effects looking out into the future. So for me to describe it, I think it's best to get a real expert in here, and that expert would be uh, Milton Friedman. And he was an uh, American economist and statistician who received the uh, 1976 Nobel Prize for in Economic Services or Sciences for research on consumption analysis, monetary history, and theory and the complexity of stabilization policy. So rest assured, this gentleman uh, probably has a pretty good grasp on it. Now, unfortunately, uh, Milton has passed away uh, in 2006. However, there was a, a great couple of videos that Milton had done, and this one uh, really boils it down to the essence of where inflation comes from. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna just have Milton take it away. He's gonna talk to you for about uh, two, two and a half minutes or so. And it really just gets down to the crux of exactly what inflation is, which will set us up for a little bit more deeper discussion moving forward. The reason we have inflation in the United States, or for that matter, anywhere in the world, is because these pieces of paper and the accompanying book entry, or their counterparts in other nations, are growing more rapidly than the quantity of goods and services produced. The truth is, inflation is made in one place and one place only, here in Washington. This is the only place where there are presses like this that turn out these pieces of paper we call money. This is a place where the power resides to determine how rapidly the amount of money shall increase. Before every election, our representatives would like to make us think we're getting a tax break. And they're able to do it while at the same time actually raising our taxes because of a bit of magic they have in their kit bag. That magic is inflation. They reduce the tax rates, but the taxes we have to pay go up because we are automatically shoved into higher brackets by the effect of inflation. A neat trick, taxation without representation. What happened to all that noise? That's what would happen to inflation if we stopped letting the amount of money grow so rapidly. This is not a new idea. It's not a new cure. It's not a new problem. It's happened over and over again in history. Sometimes inflation has been cured this way on purpose. Sometimes it's happened by accident. During the Civil War, the North, late in the Civil War, overran the place in the South where the printing presses were setting up, where the pieces of paper were being turned out. Prior to that point, the South had had a very rapid inflation. If my memory serves me right, something like 4% a month. It took the Confederacy something over two weeks to find a new place where they could set up their printing presses and start them going again. During that two-week period, inflation came to a halt. After the two-week period, when the presses started running again, inflation started up again. It's that clear, that straightforward. So yeah, I can't make any more clear than that. It's that clear. It's that straightforward. But the narrative has changed quite a, quite a bit. Uh, we've had it say that, well, the reason for inflation uh, is because of this uh, once-in-a-generation pandemic. We've also heard stories about that the reason for inflation is because of uh, the war between uh, Russia and Ukraine. But as we just saw, it didn't seem like the, the war has really slowed us down as far as a civil war. And if we really take a look at, and we just take a look at the M1 money supply. First of all, what is the M1 money supply? Uh, it is uh, beginning May 2020. M1 consists of currency outside the U.S. Treasury, Federal Reserve Banks, and the vaults of depository institutions, demand deposits at commercial banks, and other liquid deposits consisting of OCDs and saving deposits, including money market deposit accounts. You can just see that uh, in 2020, we uh, did a heck of a lot of printing uh, as far as money goes. Then we take a look at the M2 uh, which is, of course, consists of N1 plus small denomination time deposits, time deposits the amount of less than 100000 less IRA, and two balances in retail MMFs, less IRA and balances in MMFs. Uh, we can just see that still uh, we have uh, quite an increase in the monetary supply uh, moving forward. So again, if we just look back to what Milton Friedman was talking about, 
uh, we can clearly see that the real reason is just because of money printing. And that's about it. And the next thing that the, I will say is that there is a problem with all this money printing, uh, especially towards the top. And this is where we get aced out of, uh, of a lot of the benefits. And what I'm talking about is the, the Cantillon effect. And if you don't know uh, Cantillon effect, if we take a look at it, it's a change in relative prices resulting from a change in money supply, which we just talked about. It is the uneven expansion of the amount of money. And that's the base of it. But there was also another theory by Cantillon. He had a theory in which the beneficiaries of the state creating the currency is based on the institutional setup of that state. Meaning he who has close, who he was close to the king and the wealthy likely benefited from the distributed choices of currencies of the system. It's clear that the case of the U.S. capital markets, many of the major U.S. banks, large private equity houses, and Wall Street fare far better after the central bank QE or quantitative easing or printing money measures, while individual U.S. savers often witness jumps in inflation in various goods and services. And to make this uh, crystal clear, this is the best I can do, uh, which is the Cantillon effect is here in plain sight in a nice little graphic where the money printer goes burr, the, uh, the Fed gives out or the Treasury gives out a, a ton of money to big banks and other bank banks and, and people across that way that are at the very top of the food chain. And what do they do? They go out and they spend that new money. Of course, that doesn't come down to us. And of course, later, a year or two later, then, then we hear about inflation. Think about it as like, as like a house. If uh, houses were on average 200000 uh, and then of course all the big banks got just a ton of money or a, a bunch of uh, uh, different institutions got a, a ton of money to spend on it, well, they'd probably buy up a lot of those houses, which would cause the price of those houses to then go up. And then of course that would ace out the retail investor or just the average Joe and Jane like you and me. And the problem then is, is that we get priced out of the market until everything crashes down. Of course, once that happened, uh, these guys will just be back at it again. So if that isn't clear enough, I will just say like this, uh, the 10 richest men doubled their fortunes in the pandemic. Of course, we're talking about coronavirus, while the income of 99% of humanity fell. If these 10 men were to lose 99.99% of their wealth tomorrow, they would still be richer than 99% of all the people on this planet. They now have six times more wealth than the poorest 3.1 billion people. And I'm not here to uh, talk negatively about uh, the free markets. I'm just saying that uh, there's quite a lot of benefits for people on the higher end of the food chain, and that would be the Cantillon effect. And we can see this, of course, very clearly in uh, inflation as it goes up. This is uh, app.trueflation.com. There'll be a link below, and you can find it. This just takes uh, 30 different data points, uses chain link to pull in uh, real-time data, and this is what we have for the United States. We had uh, quite a bit, even though we thought it was 8.5%. That's what the government reported. But in actuality, we can see it's actually almost 12% on March. And we've come down as Jerome Powell and the Federal Reserve have made the, uh, uh, the base increases. However, that's just the USA. If you take a look at the UK, not so well. And there is uh, uh, some other type of of rumblings, they might be going up to 14, 15, 18%. So knowing all these things we just talked about with Milton Freeman, the M1 money supply, the Cantillon effect, I just need you to just to think about assets. And one of the assets that I invest into, one, not, not solely, is Bitcoin. And to make this crystal clear, if you had $20 in 1980, you could buy a heck of, heck of a lot of groceries and it worked out pretty well. But in the year 2000, not as much. And in 2022, the 20 bucks that you may have paid for a whole basket doesn't really get you too much. Trust me, I know. I've been in the supermarket. I'm not getting too much of $20. However, think about Bitcoin. And Bitcoin in 2011, you know how much one Bitcoin costs in 2011? 20 bucks, roughly. And that could have got you the same amount of, of groceries. You know which, how much one Bitcoin in 2021 could have gotten you? A car, a decent car, not just a junk car, but uh, actually a pretty nice one. And who knows what will be in 2030, but there is one thing that is for sure. And there is a quite a bit of price appreciation as opposed to the U.S. dollar. So uh, that is it for today. I just want to make that that quick video just to talk about, you know, what inflation is, where it comes from and kind of set the narrative straight. So there's not any kind of tomfoolery or people going, no, 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 it's this or it says that there's one place and it happens in a certain area. That's Washington politicians. Anyhow, if you like today's video, give it a thumbs up. I would uh, really appreciate that. And also consider subscribing. 
But that is it for today's video. So thanks so much for stopping by. I do appreciate it. See you on the next one.